Hi, my name is Tom Hadigan. I'm the author and the creator of a new YouTube channel uh, dedicated to mixed martial arts and boxing. Today, I'm going to look at a potential a matchup between Daniel Dubois, uh, the world IBF champion, and um, a prospective opponent. Now, Daniel Dubois has Daniel Dubois has recently been successful in his matchup against um, Anthony Joshua. Now, there was um, the possibility that there would be a return. I think there's an element of discretion on the part of both uh, Dubois and uh, Joshua. But it appears from recent press reports that the IBF have given permission to Daniel Dubois to take a voluntary uh, challenge from Fabio Wardley, meaning that for some, for whatever reason, Anthony Joshua will not be uh, Dubois' next opponent. So let's look at Dubois and let's look at Wardley. This is the champion, Daniel Dubois. Uh, this is his um, most famous victory. This is him dispatching the then uh, ex two time ex, the ex two time heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. Now, Anthony Joshua is a formidable opponent. He's lost to Ortiz, he's lost twice to Usyk. But those um, were, you know, honourable defeats in many senses. He's still a very formidable world champion, ex-world champion. So Daniel Dubois' victory, particularly one round victory, is a stunning feather in his cap. But he has lost twice. And this, these are interesting losses. Now, we have a situation where Dubois is the IBF world champion. Uh, but Joe Joyce, um, one of his earlier opponents who beat him, in my view, could easily have been in Daniel Dubois' position today. His career has taken some slightly negative turns and he hasn't been uh, favoured in that road as uh, Dubois is, has been. Now, um, the f fight was stopped uh, because Daniel Dubois su suffered a, an orbital injury to his orbital bone and he had a choice. Either I want to keep fighting and maybe win the fight and lose my career. He chose to bend, take a knee, protect his uh, damaged orbital, orbital bone and come back to fight another day, which he has done very successfully. But just to reiterate, Joe Joyce is a formidable um, opponent and not out of the world championship picture at all, even now. Now, this is um, Daniel Dubois uh, attempting to rest the world championships, all the belts from Alexander, Alexander Usyk. And of course, we know that Usyk is one of the world's great boxers. He may be, may be the best boxer, light heavyweight, cruiserweight and heavyweight ever. He's that good. And the interesting thing is that um, Dubois wasn't outclassed. And there was one critical point in the boxing match when Dubois hit him at the, um, on the belt some, and uh, Usyk went down and stayed down with the referee's permission. Many people take the view that it was a genuinely illegal blow and that um, Usyk was deserving of the respite. Other people take the view that it was a, a legal blow and uh, Usyk was exercising gamesmanship to recover from the blow. Um, I take the view that it was a legal punch, but others take, don't agree with that opinion. Now let's find out a little bit about um, Daniel Dubois. Okay, we have his two losses. In 2020, he lost to Joe Joyce because of the orbital fracture. Um, he then beats several good um, professionals, Trevor Bryan and Kevin Luena. They are good professionals. And then he, in my view, slightly prematurely challenged uh, Alexander Usyk for the world titles. And of course, this was when there was the controversial low blow and the uh, respite time for Usyk. Since that time, he's fought three extremely talented opponents. He beat the American Jarrell Miller, Jowell Miller. Jarrell Miller doesn't have the best press. A lot of people uh, doubt um, his uh, long term prospects in the heavyweight division. I don't think he's out of the world title picture at all. Uh, he beat Filip Hokovic, I think his first defeat. And then there was this stunning victory against Anthony Joshua. So um, these are quite extraordinary victories. And there's no disgrace in his loss to Usyk and his loss to Joe Joyce. I mean, if, if um, Daniel Dubois maintains his winning streak, I think 
there could be a match up down the road with Joe Joyce. I think that will be a fair outcome for Joyce. So let's just overview his career and his strengths and weaknesses. Dubois is a talented boxer with notable strengths, including his power and size. He's about 6'5", uh, 220 to 240 pounds. He's a formidable opponent in the heavyweight division. But he has weaknesses, such as obviously his limited experience, and he has some defensive vulnerabilities, which can be exploited. The, the major vulnerability is the fact he has a mindset of going for the kill. The great thing about going for the kill if you have a formidable punch is that if you hit your opponent, you can knock them out. What happens if that knockout blow doesn't come? You know, what other skill sets do you need to have developed in the, in the meantime? So what can we say? Power puncher, great knockout ability, physical size, 6'5", heavy heavyweight, young, 27, youthful potential, limited experience. He lacks extensive ring time. He's not been any of the, in any of the great wars um, that other boxers, heavyweights have traveled through. He does have defensive gaps because of this mindset of getting the knockout. To his credit, he has a strong team working with him. He has a strong work ethic and he's got a very competitive spirit. He's very much a fighter. He sees himself as um, someone who's willing to get into the fight. So knockout power. He has remarkable punching power, uh, very, very significant size and reach advantages, young, limited experience. He has these defensive vulnerabilities, committed to training, but resilient under pressure. Now, this is his opponent, Fabio Wardley. Now, Fabio Wardley doesn't have the same stellar presence as Dubar because he's travelled a different road. I think um, it's, it's mooted by many that he's actually come from a white collar background which means that he may have worked in the city which means that he's probably been doing some financial work so he's obviously got a good mind and a good brain and he's obviously chosen to go into the physical challenges of boxing um, with a, a sharp set of thoughts and thinking so let's look at uh, Wardley now um Let's see some of his previous opponents. Okay, Eric Molina, a little bit old, but a good heavyweight. Um, Daniel Martz and uh, Chris Healy, good heavyweights. Nathan Gorman, a British fighter. He lost the British heavyweight. He lost the opportunity to become British heavyweight title in his fight against um, Wardley. But Nathan Gorman is a fine boxer, so, as is another opponent, David Adelaide. Now, his final two opponents, uh, Fraser Clark. Fraser Clark is a very high quality boxer. And um, Fraser Clark challenged uh, Wardley for his British Commonwealth, WBA Continental, and WBO European titles. It was a draw. I think it was a fair outcome. Um, Wardley was very damaged. His nose was extremely damaged at the end of the fight. And most people thought that both. Um, Wardley and Fraser Clark were worthy of a, of a rematch. Unfortunately, the rematch didn't go well with Fraser Clark. Uh, Wardley managed to connect with a monumental strike, which of course is always the possibility if you're a heavyweight. If you are a heavyweight with a great punch, you only need one punch to end the fight. And that's exactly what happened in the first round. So uh, Wardley dispatched Fraser Clark in one round. So this is Wardley on the left. This is I think this is Fraser Clark on the right. That may not be. Let's have a look. OK, we can say that Wardley showcases a mix of strengths and weaknesses in his boxing career. His notable strength, including his ring IQ, his adaptability, uh, his impressive knockout power and a strong worth ethic. But he has been inconsistent in performances up to now. That's true. He does have a need for improved defensive skills and he does need more experience. It's interesting that he may be choosing to take the immediate challenge against uh, Daniel Dubois, whereas it might have been better to have waited for six months or a year, get some new fights and experience under his belt. But anyway, if the fight happens, it's because uh, he, um, Wardley has chosen to play his part in the fight. What can we say? Wardley is very adaptable. He has knockout power. He doesn't have the same knockout power as Dubois. He does have a work ethic. He's got a great set of trainers. He tr he's very dedicated to the training process. 
Uh, he has been inconsistent in some performances. He does have these lack in defensive skills. And of course, he does have this experience gap. Now, of course, um, if he's managed correctly and with refinement, he has the capacity to excel further in boxing. Now, whether he's going to be able to achieve that success against Dubois remains to be seen. I think probably Wardley versus Dubois now is a little bit soon for Wardley, but let's, okay. He's adaptable. He does know how to change tactics mid-fight. He's a clever guy. He does have knockout power. He doesn't have Daniel Dubois' knockout power. He has a very good worker ethic. He's got a solid group of trainers who are training him every day. He's shown inconsistency in previous performances. He's shown defensive lacks. He's shown a defensive gap, but he has the potential. So my call, my pick, um, I think the winner will be uh, Daniel Dubois.